get going. Um, but uh, if you're just just arriving, um, I'm Jenny. Um, business name is Threads of Stillness, and I make uh, textile art out of felt uh, embroidery. Um, so the idea of this video series is, at the minute, we can't really do any workshops, um, sort of face to face or events or anything like that. Um, so it's working with with what I can do and and uh, trying to uh, um, do what I can with, with, with what's available at the moment. So I thought I'll, I'll try um, a short video series of um, showing how I make uh, my smaller pieces. If you've looked at the shop or if you've been to any of the fairs, um, I've done quite a few sort of five by five, uh, five by five inches um, small pieces quite recently um, so this is designed as a bit of an insight into how I go about doing that. Uh, the plan is to do three of the three sessions so uh, um, first one this one is looking at the idea how I developed the idea and so on um, then uh, going on uh, next time looking at wet belting um, and then the last one looking at embroidery um, possibly needle felting if I do any needle felting um, and sort of finishing it all off. Um, so welcome to people who've just joined us. Um, I'm just looking at the numbers. There's obviously a few more people who've... Um, so uh, well, um, hello if you've just joined. Um, I'm Jenny. Um, I run Threads of Stillness, make my textile art out of felt, felt and embroidery. Um, I'll apologise now um, if my three and a half year old daughter suddenly appears at the door going mommy um and wanting something it's uh she was she was um uh, watching cbb's when i um with her da dad when i left um to do this so, uh, so we'll see how long that lasts but uh, apologies she does appear um just wait another minute to uh, give more people a chance to to um find us um, I'm in what is my studio at the moment, which is the shed down the back of the garden. Uh, it's, it was already here when we when we moved in. It's quite a nice shed, um, as garden sheds go. Um, and it has a very lovely view um, out over the fields at the back. Um, it's about towards, if you look that way, if you can't quite see Massam, um, it's just over the hill, but towards Massam and then far, you'd be looking sort of eventually towards Wensdale in the distance. Um, so, and, and we've got bird boxes on the outside and bird table and um, so it's nice it's got nice views uh, it's very very full at the minute because it has lots of natural dyeing stuff because I do some natural dyeing stuff and um, lots of felting wool lots of embroidery threads uh, lots of bits of fabric um, and lots of general craft stuff because I suspect like quite a lot of people um, I've ended up trying lots of different crafts um, and accumulating lots of supplies for lots of different crafts um, so it, it's it's I need to do a sort out it's quite full um, so um, welcome to anybody who's just joined us um, as I said this is the first session so I'm looking at going through how I come up with the idea how I go from sort of I want to do this looking through my photographs um, through to things like choosing colours and so on next time I'll look at wet felting Next time I'll look at the um, the third session. I'll look at um, sort of finishing off sort of embroidery and things like that. Um, the plan is to do each one Saturday two o'clock. So next Saturday at two o'clock will be the second session, and then Saturday after that for the third session. Um, the starting point for this was. Um, beginning of the year I thought okay I've, I've made quite a few of the small pictures sort of five by five inch pictures um, which seemed to work really well I quite liked um, that sort of format as, as well so I went through my all my photographs and um, to try and come up with maybe half a dozen or so photographs that might have um, from going back years all the various walks holidays everything that I've done and taking photographs on over the years I must have thousands of photographs um, going back through some of them and seeing what what might work. Um, a few years ago, I put together a scrapbook, um, well, sort of scrapbooks, um, sketchbook of uh, 
with lots and lots of photographs of that included trees. Um, I quite like trees. Um, quite like the the sort of shapes and and, and so on that you get from them. And uh, so went back through that. One of the ones that um, I thought I, I might actually be able to do something with this was um, you probably can't necessarily quite see very well in this light. Um, it was this one. Um, in and of itself, it's not a brilliant photograph. Um, but it's, you can just about see it's got um, snow-covered hills in the background, um, trees, and then um, snow with sort of reeds, grass, and so on in the foreground. Um, but I thought the shape, the, the trees, the shape's quite interesting, um, and it's it's got scope to do something with. Um, I tend to be looking when I'm looking for something like this. Um, I don't want it to be too complicated. If I'm only doing five by five inches, I don't want a super complicated um, image with lots of different elements that needs lots and lots of detail because I can't add that much detail because it's a small space. If I'm doing much bigger pieces, I do do some uh, much bigger, then I can look at things that need far more detail but at this stage I don't or for this size rather I don't want lots and lots of detail in here and I don't want lots and lots of elements because it just gets too busy and too cramped and I just can't fit it all in so I'm I'm wanting something that's relatively straightforward so with this one I've got essentially you've got your foreground with the grasses the trees mountains in the background sky I've not got lots and lots of different elements all over the place um, it's got contrast to it. Um, the other thing that I'm always looking at is um, has it got lights, has it got darks um, and mid-tones, um, which generally has, but it's, it can be quite useful if you're looking at a photograph and thinking, is this going to work? If you take the, um, if you've got, say if you've got an iPhone or a computer or something, do a copy and then convert the copy into black and white. Um, on, I've got an iPhone, mobile iPhone. If you do a duplicate of your if, of the photograph and then you can play around um, with the duplicate rather than the original um, to do um, convert the, your duplicate copy into black and white, does it still look like an interesting photograph in black and white? Um, and something like this, if you convert it into black and white, you've still got the shapes of the trees, you've still got your lights and your darks in there, so there is scope to make it interesting. Sometimes you can get what initially look like quite interesting photographs. Um, the, the trees, tree-lined hillsides in particular, I found, can be quite hard. Initially you look at it, oh, that looks great, but actually when you come to look at it, there's a lot of um, sort of mid-tones in there, sort of in between not particularly light not particularly dark and if you if it's mostly those sort of mid-tones um, you've not got as much contrast and it actually makes it harder to make an interesting photograph um, interesting picture rather so so I'm always looking for something where I've got or can create plenty of tonal contrast so plenty of lights plenty of darks because that makes it much easier to create an interesting picture that works um, for this I knew I wanted to do a felt background um, and I knew I wanted to add embroidery at the end um, for the probably for the trees so again for this one I was looking going okay I can uh, it should be fairly straightforward to for the felt I can do the sky the mountain line in the background the um, and the, the the foreground snow um, I can do all that in felt and then I can the embroidery should work quite well for adding the trees in and then adding the sort of the, the grasses and so on in the foreground so it will work for the type of picture that I'm wanting to create and the type of techniques that I want to use um, if I was just wanting to do something purely in felt for example I perhaps have slightly different considerations um, if I was in terms of how I would add details and so on um, but for something where I'm doing embroidery on top of felt this type of image works quite well um, welcome if you've just joined um, I can see that somebody else who, um, the numbers just gone up um, if you've just joined um, I'm Jenny and I'm from Threads of Stillness it's a business 
um, and I make pictures using uh, wool felt and embroidery um, and I'm talking about how, how I create those pictures um, and today I'm talking a little bit about how I go from looking for a photograph, very starting point, how I develop that idea, um, how I choose colours, things like that and then uh, going on in future sessions to talk about how I actually make the thing. Um, this this photograph, um, most of, most of the, um, the the photographs that I use tend to have nice associations, places that I've enjoyed going, places that um, have, have been quite relaxing and nice and, and, and sort of those moments of quiet and, and just enjoying the landscape. This is, is perhaps slightly um, more um, complicated than that. It was from a holiday in the Scottish borders back in November 2015, which probably high on the list of our worst holidays. Um, the beautiful landscape, absolutely stunning. Um, it snowed right at the beginning of the week. We were staying in a, um, a cottage, I think might have been an old gamekeeper's cottage or something, um, that was very basic. And we knew from the description uh, that it was fairly basic, uh, but it's, um, yes, it was more basic than we'd expected. It didn't have much in the way of insulation. Um, it heating was, inadequate um definitely given the temperatures um and, and and things like hot water and so on were also a bit inadequate um and then the car broke down midweek we'd been at the cottage for the first couple of days because it snowed and we didn't want to go out on the roads then when we finally got out the car broke down and yes it was a um, beautiful landscape and some nice photographs from it but i came away just being so grateful to come back to somewhere with decent insulation decent heating and hot showers it was so cold um but uh, but it did have nice views so uh, it, 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 yes at least something positive came out of that holiday possibly i did spend quite a lot of time actually sat in the cottage um painting and drawing and and so on um i do remember that from it which was one thing that was nice um so i, I decided i wanted to use this photograph um that this was going to be one of the ones that you know sort of half a dozen that I pulled out to work on over the next few months obviously this was before we knew what, how things were going to pan out um, so what I'm intending to do at the minute um, it varies a little bit how much I do on this stage um, I've got a piece of um, this is pulled out of a sketchbook um, photograph at the top um, and then what I've done is done a very quick sketch um, at the bottom of the sheet so and that's just a bit of a chance to work out composition, um, have a bit of a think about colours. Um, and so you can already see that I've, I've um, from the original photograph down to the sketch, um, I've cropped it down a little bit to work out how it's going to fit into the square formats. Um, I'd already decided that the foreground snow in the original photograph was a bit too dark. Um, it, it obviously the sun hadn't hit our side of the valley yet. Um, oh, hello, Michelle. Um, and so I'm having a little bit of a think about the composition here, um, trying to make it balanced. Um, and also at this stage, I'm also thinking a little bit about what colours I might use and looking for the slightly less obvious colours um, that will help to make the, the final image, more, final picture a little bit more interesting. So rather than simply saying um, the hills in the background are green, it's looking and saying actually there's hints of purple in there um, from the way um, the snow and the, and, and the the, the whatever the grass or heather or whatever it is in the background um, there's hints of purple in there so I'm, I might well draw that out um, looking at for example it this is quite a vivid blue sky it was quite a, it was a quite sunny day um, but looking at okay exactly what shade of blue is the sky or other 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 colors are within that um and 
even with this, I've done the sketch. This was, I have to say, a very, very quick sketch. Um, alongside, I've done the sketch and then added some more notes to say that I need to play around with the size of the trees a little bit to get it to balance better. Um, I did it with um, Inktense pencils, which I quite like using. Um, they're the sort that you can use water over the top to create a wash. Um, so more or less as I've done in the background, or you can just use them as ordinary sort of colouring pencils. Um, they work quite well if I'm in the house and I don't really want to get all my paints out, particularly if I've got a small person coming and saying, can I help? Um, she likes painting, um, but it isn't always very helpful if she comes and joins me. So just using in intense pencils or, or something similar uh, works quite well for if, I, if I've just got sort of 10, 15 minutes at home and fitting it in with um, with other bits and pieces. Um, so I've done the, I've had a look at the photograph side of the work. Um, I've done a quick sketch, um, looked at the colours, looked at the composition. Um, there's plenty of scope to adapt. I'm not following the photograph slavishly because um, I'm, I'm not, my, my work te doesn't tend to be about sort of creating a sort of photorealistic um, pictures. I want something that will work. Um, so I, I quite often draw colours out that are perhaps sort of there are hints of those colours in the original photograph or the original image but I'll make it bring those out um, I'll play around with composition sometimes if it makes it work better um, I'll play, as I said earlier um, that foreground is too dark on, on this really um, it's too gloomy so I'm gonna um, lighten that up a little bit uh, to make the original uh, to make the final picture work a little bit better um, the amount of time I spend on the, the sketching process um, depends a lot on the size of the image. Um, so for something fairly small like that, a fairly simple um, picture, as I said before, it's quite small so I'm not wanting to go super complicated. Um, um, and Sorry, I've got a laptop on the side that I'm sort of keep, keeping half an eye on the, any um, comments or anything like that um, so if I'm doing something much bigger the chances are I'll spend much more time um, on the sort of doing sketches and so on um, or if it's a bit more complicated I'll spend much more time um, doing sketches to work out the composition getting things to balance properly um, playing around with colors and so on um, so we've done this done a, a bit of a sketch to just work out the composition um, we've chosen the photograph the next stage when I, that I come to um, before I start wet felting is to choose some of the colours now this isn't about choosing every single colour that I'm possibly going to use um, because I tend to just um, work as I go along at finding exactly what I want it, what I'm wanting but it's coming up with I think here I've got seven or eight colours that a sort of small number of key colours that are my starting point. So um, in fact all of this is merino wool uh, which tends to be the, the wool that's usually used for, um, for this type of felting because it felts really easily, it's quite fine. Um, and it's quite smooth, there's not much texture to it um, and you can mainly you can get it in an enormous range of colours um, and I, I have quite a range of colours long term I want to move towards using native breeds um, I'm looking at um, using plant dyes, natural dyes um, to create that range of colours that's a long term project because to get to the point where I've got a good enough colour palette um, of colours that are light fast enough um, and to have done all that testing for light fast, light fastness and so on, that's a long term project. Um, I'm working towards it, um, there are some, there's some lovely native breed wools, um, Shetland is really nice, it's quite fine wool, 
um, and it, it felt really nicely so that's that's something that I'm looking at creating um, a range of colours in Shetland wool um, to use for for felting and there's, there's lots of other breeds as well particularly in some, some that can create some really interesting colour um, textures um, perhaps some that have more crimp which is wavier um, and there's there's lots of interesting natural colours um, as well the sort of natural um, sort of the, the blacks and the browns and the greys and so on um, so there's lots of scope uh, but that's a long-term project to build up um, I've got lots of merino wool um, so I'm sort of using that up um, and, and hopefully long-term shift towards the native breeds um, if you're looking to get them the, I'll try and get a suppliers um, list of suppliers that I know about um, or that I've used up on my website within the next week or so um, so I'll let you know on the next session um, if that's up so if you're looking at this um, and thinking at some point um, that you'd quite like to have a go I'll put a suppliers list up um, of where are good places to to get hold of um, the supplies and so on um, there's the first first color is this white essentially it's well it's off white um, I think the official name is pearl um, the, this color it's uh, it's a bit like clothing it comes with all sorts of sort of creative names that are sometimes more more easy to work out what the colour actually is than others. Um, so this this will be this will this is the colour that I've got that's going to create the first cut sort of two layers that will create the base for the picture. That it's almost like creating the um, paper as it were. So usually I'll go for white or an off white or something like that. In this case the picture um, if you go back and look at it, it's fairly cool. Um, it, the whites in it are on the cooler side, so I've gone for a shade of white that is on the sort of cooler side rather than a warmer cream um, to give me what I want because that base colour will, in places, directly show through. Um, there are places probably in the, in the snow on the background, possibly in the sky, where you'll be able to sort of see it clearly. Um, I'll, I won't cover it up completely um, the, and even on the other, um, on the rest of it, um, given I don't tend to um, build up huge amounts of wool on, um, as I'm sort of painting as it were um, with the other colours so that base layer will influence how you see the colours in front. Um, so if, say, I went for a much darker colour as my base layer um, or a more vivid, I don't know, red or something like that, that would show through and influence all the colours, um, how you saw all the colours in front of it. This particularly with wet felting because as it felt, all the fibres sort of meld together and um, the lower, uh, the, the colours the base colour will almost migrate upwards and the colours on top will slightly make, migrate downwards. So that base colour is quite important. Um, the next um, next thing I was looking at is the hills. So there's hints of browns and greens in there. Um, I'll probably use the base colour to create the snow in the background. Um, so I've got uh, a brown there, I've got a green there, it's a little bit more vivid than the original colours. I'll probably use it in moderation um, and I might end up using a much more muted green, um, just sort of hints over the top to just knock it back a little bit. Um, but it's that sort of, but it, using those, those slightly more vivid colours will create interest in those hills. Um, I don't want too much because that's going to throw out the balance of the picture but um, trying to spot those sort of interesting colours um, that will help create interest in the, the final picture. Um, the, as I said 
early at the beginning um, there's quite a few there were quite a few shades of purple in the um, in the hillside from how the snow and the light and the um, the um, I suppose vegetation or whatever it is on the hills in the distance um, how that combined so I've looked for a couple of um, shades of one's a sort of lavendery colour um, and the other one is um, it's apparently called mink um, but it's it's really nice quite muted quite soft um, almost sort of pinkish there's a hint of grey in there as well um, but that that should give that sort of sense of the, the purple of the hills in the background um, I've pulled out a couple of blues as I said it's quite a bright blue sky um, and so I've, I've picked out quite a bright blue I'll probably use the white of the the background um, colour to um, to create clouds or to create the illusion of clouds. Um, as I said at the beginning, I, um, the the foreground is snow. It's in the original photograph. It's it's in quite deep shadow. Clearly, the sun hadn't come up on our side of the hill, um, our side of the valley at that point. Um, so it it was quite dark in the original photograph. I want to lighten it up. I don't want that really, really dark foreground. Um, but it's it's equally, it's not actually um, pure white. It's um, it's a sort of bluey grey colour. So I've got a, a pale blue out. Um, I might find a, um, a sort of very pale grey as well. Um, but again, it's looking at things and saying, actually, it's not um, sort of, okay, snow is white actually when you start to stop and look at how it appears in the light um, it, it can actually be all sorts of different colours and it probably isn't pure white um, so that's seven or eight colours which will be my starting point when I come to build up the picture um, and that will and I'll, I'll probably add lots more as I build it up but that gives me a starting point of going okay Will all of these work together? Yes, I think so. Um, and um, it's it's quite similar to building a watercolour um, to an extent. So if you've done watercolour, there are quite a lot of similarities between that. Um, so we've gone through the process of choosing a picture uh, or choosing a photograph. So saying, okay, I think I want to make some more um, pieces. Where can I? Um, what photographs might be useful, might work, um, what will, might turn into an interesting picture in the end. Um, we talked a little bit about sort of finding that sort of tonal contrast, or sort of plenty of lights, plenty of darks, not all in the middle. Um, I want to do embroidery, so we're looking at ha finding something that has interesting lines in, um, and that will work for the techniques that I want to use. Um, looking at developing a sketch, looking at colours next time next so next Saturday two o'clock again um, I'm planning to do another short session um, and that will be looking at or going through hopefully um, how you turn this pile of wool into um, a piece of felt um, a felt picture so that should be going through all of that uh, and then the following Saturday two o'clock I'm planning to do um, a third session that is looking at the embroidery, possibly needle felting if I add any, um, finishing it off. Um, so that's the plan. So next Saturday at two o'clock I'll do another session. Following Saturday at two o'clock I'll do a third session. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, it's 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 very odd not actually having any of these sort of events or workshops or anything normally running, and um, I'm sure like everybody else. Um, or a lot of other people being stuck at home so it's quite nice to to do something um, where connecting with people even at a distance so thank you very much for watching thank you very much for coming um, I hope everybody stays safe um, and stay safe and well and all your family and loved ones are all well as well um, thank you to anybody who 
watches this who's a key worker in any capacity um, and I hope that it won't be too long before things improve a lot um, and it's it becomes safe to be able to get out and see everybody again to see people at events or fairs or workshops hopefully get some actually proper workshops um, sorted um, later in the year fingers crossed um, so I'll do another session next Saturday um, two o'clock um, if you don't already um, please like or follow the Facebook page um, Threads of Stillness um, to see more news about um, the, the next few sessions um, and any other news about what's going on um, I'm doing some embroidery patterns at the minute so they'll be on Facebook at some point um, if you go to my website www.threadsofstillness.co.uk you can sign up to the email newsletter if you want um, I think it's at the bottom right hand corner yeah um, and um, there's, there's the option to sign up for the email newsletter which again gets you some news about what's going on um, I'll sometimes with discounts on there and things like that um, I will put the video onto the Facebook page and uh, my website and YouTube um, assuming I can get all this to work it's this is the first video I've done so it's all a bit of a learning curve and a bit of an experiment getting all the technology to work um, but I, I will put the video onto Facebook and my website and hopefully YouTube and things like that so that if you want to come back and watch or if you um, know anybody else who didn't see it this time but would be interested um, it will be up there to watch again um, I will try and get some resources on the website before next Saturday so um, a list of the equipment that I use suppliers things like that um, and a bit of a sort of worksheet summary of, of what I've talked about for anybody who likes being able to read and jot down notes and so on um, I'll try and get all that up there and I will put on um, something on Facebook when it's when they're on there with, with links um, if anybody wants to have a look um, I hope this has um, been um, a little bit interesting or helpful or at least entertaining um, uh, yeah if, if you have any questions if you're at home with a collection of supplies um, for sort of felting or something like that um, and you you want to have a go um, then if you've got any questions please send me a message or something through Facebook or on my website or something like that um, I, mean, I, I don't think we should feel like any under pressure at the minute to get lots of projects done or learn new skills or anything like that um, I think it's it's too easy to to get into oh, I must do all these things and I must make really good use of the time and so on no <laughs> We're, it, this is really tough time at the minute so um, so this is not saying you should all go out and learn how to do this um, but if you if you do have the supplies or if you want to um, if, if you if you do get them and want to have a go and have any questions then um, please get in touch um, hopefully the these videos and the, the next two which will be more practical um, might help if, if you're stuck going I have these things and I've no idea what to do with them um, but thank you very much for watching. Hopefully see some people next Saturday at two o'clock. Um, I'll do the same one again, more practical next time. Looking at wet felting. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please uh, take care, stay safe, stay well. Um, and hopefully see at least some of you in real life before too long. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. I'd better go off and um, see how my small daughter is, I think.